Welcome to Delicious and Nutritious. Uh, we are at Pack TV uh, Test Kitchen, and we're. Uh, we, I want to thank Pack TV for being one of our sponsors, also the Center for Active Living, and uh, and Plymouth Health, Healthy Plymouth, and. Uh, at this time, we're going to go over to the Center for Active Living, and Marsha Rich is our very talented nutritionist, is going to say a few words. Take it away, Marsha. All right. Hi, Jerry. How are you? I'm well. And you? Good, good. Happy post-Thanksgiving. Um, it's November, and November is National Diabetes Month. So today's show is devoted to diabetes management. So two things that I wanted to mention is, um, one is a condition called prediabetes. And it's considered that maybe one in three people with prediabetes don't know it. So damage can be occurring within their bodies. So whenever you go to the doctor, you should get a blood sugar check, a glucose check to identify this. And then sometimes people have type 1 diabetes or type 2. I want to focus mostly on prediabetes and type 2. So both of these prevention and management can be accomplished three ways. Weight management, healthy diet, and exercise. So we've all... Uh, we all know that exercise is important. The more we move, the better we are. So the reason why these three things are so important is because diabetes is a problem with blood sugar. When we eat foods that are rich in carbohydrate, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, milk, these are the good ones. When we eat carbohydrate foods like Donuts, soda, sugar, candy, uh, fruit drinks. Those also convert into glucose or sugar in your blood. But they're not good sources. They don't provide you with nutrients. So you want to have more of the fruits, the vegetables, the whole grains, less of the sodas, the sugars, and the sweets. When we eat carbohydrate foods, they convert into glucose. That glucose is what we use for fuel. In order to use it for fuel, our pancreas secretes a hormone called insulin. Sometimes insulin doesn't work as well as it should. And people that are eating a lot of carbohydrate-rich foods the pancreas can get kind of stressed and not enough insulin will be available. Now that glucose remains in the bloodstream instead of being used for energy the way it should. So what we choose to eat can have an impact on process and exercise is one of the best ways to burn off glucose, this fuel. And weight management is also important. So today's recipe is a diabetes-friendly recipe, rich in vegetables, whole grains, and also water-soluble fibers. So I'm going to turn this back to Jerry so that we can learn how to make our Southwest taco with smoky salsa. And I'll talk with everybody again in a little bit. Okay, Marcia, thank you. Uh, that's very informative. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that, that you're, you're doing this. And we're attempting on this show to be proactive, meaning that we want you to live a healthy life so you don't have to go to the doctor and the doctor finds something wrong with you. So what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off with what we call a soft taco with southwestern vegetables. Now, what is a soft taco? Soft taco is this. It's soft instead of being hard. And this is a very healthy one because it's made out of whole wheat. And I'm going to show you what to do with that in a moment. Now, what we have done here is that I have made the, the southwestern vegetables. And you have the 
the, the recipe in front of you. And I just want to go over a few things very briefly. You've all seen my knife technique, so you know how I, I use a knife and so forth. I want to just take a look at our ingredients and see if there's anything here that my, if someone might have a question about. Okay. Oh, here we go. A jalapeno chili. What is a jalapeno chili? Jalapeno chili is about three and a half to four inches long. It's a nice bright green, and it's got a little stem on the top of it. And it is one of what is called a mild uh, chili. It is not a very hot chili. What they suggest is that you remove the, uh, remove the seeds and the dividing piece of uh, material in the inside of the jalapeno. So what I do is I take my knife and I cut it down the long end and I kind of flatten it out a little bit on my work surface and I take the knife and I kind of scrape along the top of it and all, and all of it comes right off. So we get rid of the seeds. Remember the seeds and the piece of veg vegetation that is in the inside? That's where most of the heat is. Then we dice it. The smaller you dice it, the, uh, you don't get a big piece in your mouth that's going to cause you a problem. So now, and, and looking on here, okay, we get to the bottom of our list, and it says a half a cup of smoke flavored salsa. Well, that's the next thing that I'm going to talk about, which is right here. And that's our, and we've made this up also, and what we're going to do with this in a few minutes, and we're going to blend it, and we're going to make a sauce out of it. So. First thing we've done is we've sliced and diced uh, and we've sauteed, or some, some people call it sweating, and uh, the chefs do. And, we've, and I'm using, if you'll notice, it asks for uh, beans, and I am using canned beans because I find that the canned beans are very acceptable and you don't have to soak them overnight and then drain them and rinse them and wash them. And it's so very easy to open up a can. They come in a 14.5-ounce uh, can, and they're excellent. And, they're, and there's all different kinds of them. So, uh, and if you want them a little bit softer after they come out of the can, you cook them a little bit longer. Okay, so we put all of our things together, and we've, uh, we're now stirring it, and we're cooking it down a little bit. You can see the smoke coming off of this. And, hmm, smells good. Now... Always taste. Chefs usually have a tasting spoon. Okay, so we do a taste, and hmm, that's good. Okay, but I want to just add a tiny bit of salt. So that I'm using a half a pinch, a little grind on the the pepper mill, fresh ground pepper, and. Now, am I going to taste with this spoon that has been in my mouth? No, I'm not. So I'm going to put that off to the side, and I'm going to find another spoon. Here we go. And good. The adjustment is fine. Now, I've never met a good chef that doesn't taste while they're cooking. If, you've, if somebody is cooking up a bunch of food and they're not tasting it, uh, I question whether they know what they're doing. All right, let's go to the salsa. Salsa is very simple. It's a sauce. And what we did is we sauteed our onions uh, with some garlic. We put in canned chipotle chili in adobo. Now, what is that? You can find this in the supermarket. It comes in a little small can, about three, three ounces or so. And it is, an adobo is, is a sauce. And, and the chipotle is a type of pepper, and it's all, and it's all uh, in the can. All you do is you put it, I open it up, put it, lay it out on your cutting board, and kind of mince it up a little bit so you get better distribution when you're cooking. Good. So what else do we have here? We have anything that's unusual? <coughs> okay. A fire-roasted crushed tomatoes. Uh, they are readily available in the supermarket. Uh, they come in a 14.5-ounce uh, can, and they are tomatoes. They, they roast them over a file, fire, so you get a little smokiness. And, and that's something that I wanted in this. All right. We put all of that together, and I'm going to take, and I'm going to put it into my blender. 
Now, you want to remember one thing about blending something, especially if you're working with something that's warm, is that if you splash it out of the blender, then you're going to burn yourself. Now, if you happen to notice, I'm wearing a little Band-Aid on my finger. The reason being is I kind of nicked myself a little bit uh, early this morning. And I will have to say that uh, if you haven't cut yourself or you haven't burnt yourself, you're not cooking enough. So uh, I'm not suggesting you burn yourself or cut, or cut yourself. But now, watch what I'm doing here. You can see the steam coming off. It is hot. So I'm going to get most of it in here before I lift the pan. Why is that? Because this is relatively heavy. I mean, so get most of it in here. And you're not going to get burnt by doing this. We're going to blend it on low. And we're going to take this right here. And we're going to just scoop it all in there. And we're going to give it a little bang and push that out of the way. Head over to our blender. Make sure we put our lid on. Check the, the, the top. Make sure it's in the right place. OK, we're going to set this up on the on button. And we're going to put it on low. And we are blending away. OK, I'm going to turn it down for a moment and just push it down a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's coming. OK, just push it down a little bit more. OK, done. Now, what we're going to do is we're taking a frying pan. And you'll notice that this is not a non-stick. So, and that's what I want to use to heat my taco shells. So we're taking that. And just before I do that, I want to add the last thing that needs to go into the blender, which is apple cider vinegar and a little tiny bit of molasses. So that's in there. Notice my favorite uh, jam jar. Almost done. Just a little bit more scoop down on the side. OK, I'm satisfied. Now, we turn on our pan and Notice it's a dry pan. There isn't anything in it. I'm not going to put anything in there. I have some olive oil just in case I might have wanted to use it. I'm not going to use it. But now we take this. It's nice and soft. You can actually freeze all of these and just take them out and let them sit on the countertop for 15 or 20 minutes or so. And, and they'll be fine. So we got some heat going in here. Yes, there is heat. We put it in there. now. What we're going to do here is I want a little bit of color on it because it's going to change the flavor of it. This is whole wheat. Whole wheat's got a nice flavor to it, but I want to make it more flavorful. So we are going to just let it sit in here a bit. Now, uh, my hands are conditioned to be able to pick up things like this and uh, without bothering me. but. If you're uncomfortable reaching in here, or if you want, you can slide it off to one side and then flip it like that. Uh, 
or you can get out a nice pair of tongs like this and you can use the tongs to flip it. So there's a variety of ways of doing this. And just for uh, the sake of what we're doing here, I'm going to just use the tongs. But uh, you know, you can also flip it up in the air and let it go up and down, and sometimes it gets in the pan, sometimes it doesn't. So we're going to keep heating here. And we are, and then I'm gonna show you how to put it all together. And that's, that is a very nice thing. So, we get a plate. And remember we have the vegetable part of it. And to the vegetable part, just before we wanna use it, we're gonna add a little chopped cilantro. So the chopped cilantro goes in there. And, and this is going to put a burst of flavor. And so the chopped cilantro is going in there. But notice what I'm watching. Out of the corner of my eye, I am watching that taco so it doesn't burn. So the cilantro is in there now. We're going to do one more flip. And look at that. See the color? That's what we wanted. Just a little bit of burn. And it, it's really not burnt. It's just a, a flavor additive. And that's the purpose of the whole thing. What we really want to do is we want it to be delicious. And Marsha will say, but I want it to be nutritious also. So that's what we're going to do. And so we turn that off. And now we have it here. We take our vegetables. And we're going to put them in the center, like about like this here. And we're going to push this guy over there like that because we don't want it falling out. And to finish this, we take our blender. And you can pour this into a container, which we will do to make it a little bit easier. And look, look at how this looks. Oh, what a smell. So we now take that. And we're going to drizzle along the top like this. And we're going to take it and put it up here like this here. We're going to roll up one end and then fold it over like that. And now we've got one end open, one end closed. And it's not dribbling all over the place, or it won't for a couple of minutes. And what I'm going to do is give it a taste. Mm. That's good. OK, now, it has a nice smokiness to it. It has a vegetable flavor to it. There's a little bit of heat from the jalapeno and the chipotle. And this is delicious. Mm. Excellent. What I'd like to do right now is uh, go back to Marsha and, uh, and have anyone that would like to ask questions. I'm happy to uh, discuss what, whatever you'd like. Uh, so please go ahead. Take it away, Marsha. All right. For those of you who can't smell that smoky <laughs> salsa, it is so aromatic, I guess would be the word. Aromatic is a good word for it, yes. All right. All right, so here's my other, my challenge. I like to come up with my monthly challenge for Jerry. Mm -hmm. So the browning of the corn tortilla, is that Maltese is, reaction or caramelization? Uh, you're, you're, um, well, it's, it's, <laughs> it's more like a, a Maillard, oh, Maillard reaction. Maillard. That's Mayard, right. Okay, it's and uh, I hate to correct you on this one, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> uh, okay, you it, it's did. it's called Mayard, and essentially what it is is it's uh, the testing. changing of the protein, but uh, with this whole wheat taco shell, uh -huh. and I really like this because of its nutrient value, and I also like it because uh, of the the it, it's a little bit harder than the flour taco, and I like that density, and but it's I, the browning gives a subtle flavor to it. It's kind yeah. of like cooking a turkey 
that uh, you've got a nice crustiness on the top of the skin. And you taste that and you say, oh, wow, that's delicious. Yeah. But it's due to the Maillard reaction. Okay. Oh, so with the skin, too, that's oh. Maillard. Oh, all right. I exactly. was thinking it was just starches. No, all right. it's Excellent. A, it's a lot of things. Good. So we're going to move on to questions. But before, I'm going to do a very brief PSA, okay. a public service announcement. So behind me, you can see some beautiful watercolor paintings. Mm -hmm. And these were done by the Botanical Watercolor class on Wednesday mornings here at the Center for Active Living. And if somebody would like to learn how to do some watercolor, come on down. All right. So let's see. People are enjoying the Southwest Taco, which is very diabetes friendly. Okay. So let me see if this questions. Yeah. There's a lady in the background with a question. Oh, <laughs> nope. She doesn't have a question. <laughs> oh, yes. use parsley instead of cilantro? Did, did you get that, Jerry? No, I can't hear uh, what they're saying, oh, okay. uh, but okay. I hear you fine. So the question was, a person who might not like cilantro, yes. would parsley be a good substitute? Okay. It, it'll, the way it looks, it looks almost like cilantro, flat leaf parsley. Fine, but the flavor is different. But there is no reason why you can't leave the cilantro out because there are a lot of people that don't like cilantro. So leave it out, put in the flat leaf parsley. The flavor will be somewhat different, but uh, it's gonna look good. So that's the answer. That's, yep, that's perfect. Another question. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's stop there. We'll just okay. do two. Yeah, just because I can't remember them all. <laughs> all right. So first question is yes. for the smoky salsa. Yes. Very spicy. Which ingredient is causing the spice, and would there be a way to reduce the spice? Okay. Let's do the, uh, take a quick look at our recipe. And believe me, I know what's in there. But the, the thing that would give you the heat is going to be the canned chipotle chili in adobo. Now, it's, uh, you can cut it back. The, what I would do is if I think it's too spicy, because the adobo adds a really nice flavor to it, I would cut, about ha I cut it back half and then try it. And then decide whether you want to put it a little bit more in or you want to take a little bit more out. Yeah, Without it, that, that is where the spiciness is. I happen to think it's mild. But what do I know? I, yeah, yeah. You know, I like fire coming out of my ears. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's taste buds are different. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's taste buds are different. So the next part of the question was she doesn't keep molasses in the house yes. with brown sugar be a good alternate. Okay. Again, the flavor will be slightly different, but I think what we wanted to do with this sauce is to bring up a little bit of sugariness, a tiny bit of sweetness to counteract some of the, the hot, and uh, the flavor will be somewhat different, but I see no reason for tr not trying it. You know, the key is to try. Yep. And that's one of the things that your recipes are always great about is their flexibility. Exactly. Yep. You know, the okay. most important thing about cooking is, is, is the tasting and deciding, do I like it? If I don't like it, what's in there that I don't like? Take mm -hmm. that out, put something else in. This is, not a, this, this is not rocket science here. There isn't a manual here. You can adjust any recipe that you happen to find. Yep. It's another one of your healthy and delicious recipes. They're exactly. easy to prepare. They're nutritious. They're delicious. 
and they're also very affordable. Exactly. Okay, so we've only got a minute left. Oh, the tortillas. They, um, I can answer that one for Jerry, probably. Go ahead. Yeah. You could cook the tortillas ahead. Uh, Marcia, I'd, I'd like to add one comment. Yeah. Uh, I tend not to want to do that, and the reason being is that they might get a, a little hard. And oh, okay. So if, if you want to do that, then there is a way to deal with that. If you want to do it, cook your tortilla, put it on a plate, put a, uh, a, a towel uh, yep. on top of it, a dish towel. Cook another one, put it on top of it. Cook another one, put it on top of it. Keep it covered with a dish towel. Uh, it will work. My preference is I really like them soft. Now, let's, uh, the, the one that I have here that I made, I, I'm just touching it right now, and it's still relatively soft. So it's okay. fine. Awesome. Great. Well, we're out of time. The 30 minutes goes by so fast. So um, thank you for visiting with Jerry and I for Delicious and Nutritious. This recipe and many others are available on healthyplymouth.org. We look forward to seeing everybody next month when we make cookies. We're doing cookies. Uh, <laughs> if anyone has an idea on what they would like to see us do, Please either contact PAC TV, tell them you want delicious and nutritious to uh, do something. And, or the same thing with uh, the Center for Active Living. Contact them and they'll pass it on to us. If it's doable, we'll do it. We'll do it. Good. All right. Great to be with you as usual, Jerry. Take care, Marsha. See you later.